Hi guys, I have a website that's been bouncing around in Google like crazy. So it started with the last Google Core update and I want to show you the graph here so you can see what I'm talking about. So here it's like the site is killed totally. And then after a while it comes back and then it goes down again. And normally when we see shifts like this is because we have social traffic or we're trending on Facebook or Reddit all of a sudden just blew up this URL and send a ton of traffic to our site. But actually this site is almost 100% organic traffic so the graph should look like this. And there's a very clear correlation here between the Google Core Update as I said and that first drop. So of course I was pretty freaked out um, that it just dropped to the ground all of a sudden. Uh, but I should say this is a very small site at the peak when it had the most traffic It was only getting between one and two thousand page views. So it's still a very new project and doesn't have a lot of authority which Obviously here is a problem and there's some other problems that we will tend to and I should say this site is built Completely like I always do and like I teach on this channel So no link building and I went 100% after underserved topics So it should definitely be able to rank because nobody else wrote these articles that I'm ranking this website for and There's quite a lot of content on the site and it's something that I have been thinking about a little bit that maybe Google is changing some things right now. So you cannot post as much content as we normally could. So we're talking hundreds of articles. We posted like 200 articles pretty quickly over a month or two. So initially this website was cre created with 10 articles. I've been mentioning this website before. I built out three sites like more than a year ago just to sit on the shelf so I could pick them up if I wanted to build out a new site at some point because because then it would have some history and it would somehow already be established and have some traffic so after a while after that year i picked it up i started to pour a lot of content on it so i'm thinking maybe this drop is caused uh, by google thinking that that it could be ai generated content because we've seen a lot of these ai content sites typically something like sites that just answer a lot of basic questions with little bits of text and then it's the next question and the next and the next and they tend to rank pretty quickly until google will hit it like we saw with the last update we saw some of these sites just fall flat on the ground so if google thought this site was like that maybe because i built out the content really fast all of a sudden like hundreds of articles it could be a warning or a sign to us that maybe it's not a good idea to put a ton of content on all of a sudden but i think there's another problem that we'll come back to so despite the site going up and then going down and going up and then down i'm pretty happy to see that it's actually growing pretty steadily so it's not like it lost all you can say all the traction doing that dead face it's like it's coming back stronger so it's not like this dead face just killed it or just paused it entirely it's like when it came back it continued at, at a higher level and there's something else that i learned from this that i really like so normally when we see a site getting hit by a core update like this where it just falls flat and you see all the traffic disappearing 100 percent correlating with a core update normally it will take a long time before you come back it'll normally take until the next core update so let's say the core update here kills your site you have to wait till the next core update for it to sort of get, get a second chance i have a chance to come back so i've seen that many times within my work with seo over the years and especially over the last couple of years but actually in this case it only took a few weeks after the core update rolled finished rollout and then all of a sudden it came back so I'm thinking that Google was readjusting some of the algorithms or maybe some machine learning took a lot of data into account and looked at these uh, domains that were slashed completely to see if it was actually valid or if they were sort of just hit by Google's drive-by shooting and shouldn't be killed in the fire. So I take this to mean that you don't necessarily need anymore to wait a full period, like a half year, to get your site back in case it dies with a Google Core update. So that's good news to many of us. Um, but I will say this coming up and coming down and this traffic coming and going like this seeing a curve like this is pretty frustrating it's not like i feel like i want to build out this site to become this big thing because this site looks pretty vulnerable to me and i don't want to throw too many resources in something that can just go up and down like this 
So I mentioned before that something else was going on on this side. And the thing is that I did compromise on one point when I built this site compared to all the other sites that I built. Normally I always start on a completely fresh domain that has been registered before. And even though this domain was picked up by me as a new registration, I, I just registered it from scratch. It did have a previous registration period. So something was on the site, it was dropped and I could purchase the domain again. So it's pretty important to check these things. And there's a couple of things we need to check when we purchase a new domain. So first of all, you want to check Wayback Machine. You put your URL in here, put the domain in here and see if it actually has some history. Let me show you here on the screen how to do that. So when we pop a domain in here, you'll see if it has some history. So the reason why I chose to go with this domain anyway was because I really, really like the domain name. And many times I would say in my experience, if it's pretty clear, if nothing was done like black hat wise, or nothing was uh, over optimized from an SEO perspective, nine out of 10 times it's fine to build on a domain that was dropped and many years ago had some history. But there are a few things that we always need to check. So the first thing we always need to check when we're registering a new domain is Wayback Machine like I just showed you. And you wanna check a screenshot of the site. You can click on these little timestamps and actually see what the site looked like. And you wanna see that nothing shady or spammy was going on. So when I checked this site that I'm talking about here, it did have a lot of ads on it. So it had that for a while. And later it had a phase where it was just this uh, parked domain thing. I think it was with GoDaddy, so that's a domain registrar that just had the site and you could just see that it was sort of parked there. They typically put some ads on and say that you can bid on the domain or it's up for sale over here and stuff like that. So that's the history with the site. And that's also why I just went with it because normally that means that nothing really happened on the site. There was not a lot of links to it and that's the next thing you need to check. We want to check the backlink profile. So that's the amount of links and how quickly these links came to the site. So we want to check what we call the link velocity. And that's just a fancy way of saying we want to check how quickly these links to this domain was created. So we can do that with many different tools like Ahrefs or SEMrush. I prefer Ahrefs. I've just had an account there for ages. So you can see how quickly these links were created. If, if you see like a crazy spike, then you want to check these links to see if they are spammy or if they are in fact natural. I mean, there could be good reasons why you get a ton of links in a very short time. If you suspect that anybody purchased links or did try to manipulate using link building tricks or just getting a lot of sites to link to it all of a sudden, then I would definitely stay away from it. And if people have been buying links from PBNs, that's just short for private blog networks, just networks of sites that people build out just to link to sites to get them to rank faster, it's typically pretty easy to spot. Because when you go into Ahrefs or SEMrush and check the sites that link to a domain, you'll see if they are pretty optimized. And you can go over to these sites, these domains, these websites that link to your site and see if they link out to all these crazy things that are not really super related. Many times people creating these PBNs, they get, they get sloppy and they'll link out to everybody who's paying them. And so if they just link out left, right and center and it's super optimized, um, then I would definitely also stay away from it. So before you go with the domain, you want to check uh, the anchor text, that's just the clickable text, the text you click on to land on your site. So the links pointing to you, you want to check what these words that people click on actually are. And you don't want these anchor text links to be something like cheap stuff over here or best X for Y or buy this over here. Because if you have too many of these like cheap, best, buy, and these super optimized words that's very, very valuable to rank for, then it has probably been built to the site previously, like back in the day when somebody else owned the domain, somebody probably paid for these links and it will look very unnatural to Google because naturally very few people will link to something and saying that this is the cheapest product, that this is the best product. It's just a very spammy way to do it. And it's typically done like 10 years ago because somebody wanted to rank for these search terms. I know this because I worked with e-commerce SEO 15 years ago and that's exactly what everybody did. They just built a ton of links with like best camera and then there's a link and super great cameras and cheap cameras and buy cameras here. You just build like hundreds of these links before Google 
got algorithms to figure this out and then you would definitely rank for it. So if you have a site with links like that, stay away from it. So that's checking the anchor words. What we want to see though, with these links pointing to your site, if there are any links, is a lot of links that just says the domain name and then that's a link or the domain name.com or click here or read here or check this out. So that's a non-optimized way to link and that's how people normally link out to stuff. It is also fine to just have some keywords there, but you don't want buy, best, cheap, and these words to have a majority of the anchor text pointing to your site. So back to the site here, what am I gonna do with this site? So first of all, I'll say this is not a fatal thing that will forever prevent this site from moving forward. It's not a sign that it's completely banned because it's still a new site and I could probably build it out and just, I mean, over a year or two, it'll probably stabilize and start growing smoothly. But the thing is that I have another site that I could definitely migrate these articles into. So I think what I'm gonna do is just let it sit there for maybe six months and then just see what happens, see if it picks up. And then I'll probably just take all these articles and put them on another site that I own that could work with these topics and these categories as well. So I have another really broad site that could definitely eat up the smaller side. But I want this other side to become a little bigger and more established first, because that other side that I wanna move them to needs some more authority, I feel like. It needs to be bigger before it could eat a side that's not working too well. So that's my strategy for it. But I would say if this is your side, I mean, wait a few months if you can, if you have other sites that are earning your money or if you have a day job, if you have an income, and it's also a good sign to us that once you have good traffic, build out a second site. Because if something like this happens down the road, it's just nice that you don't have all your eggs in one basket. I think I'm gonna migrate it. I'll definitely keep you guys posted on what's, what I'm gonna do and how it all turns out and if this site sort of wakes up again. So before I go, I just wanna say I'm trying to get back to posting one video per week and I think I'm gonna do this from the next week because now we are settled in our new place here. I'm in the garden here, it's a nice space. If you wanna see what it looks like, it's just a garden here inside. Um, a lot of apartments, we live over here behind the, there's a trampoline over here somewhere, yeah. And um, so I'm trying to get back to posting a video every week and I think that'll be happening from next week. So I'm excited to get back in the grind and uh, I'll see you guys.